In my second video tonight, I thought we would tackle a subject which every student I have ever had was really, really, really keen to learn. And of course, that is vibrato. So, uh, before we get into the nitty gritty of how to get started, of um, how the whole learning process works, there are a couple of very important things which I want to mention. One that when it comes to vibrato there is more than one way of learning it and um, teaching it um, i myself learned it in a couple of different ways and over the years i've taught it in different ways and the one i'm going to show you tonight is really the one i have in the end found to be the most successful both myself as a player but also as a teacher but if you have um, had it explained to you differently, maybe that doesn't mean that that approach is wrong um, and these approaches aren't mutually exclusive either. So that is that is very, very important. Uh, and secondly, the process of learning vibrato is a long one and it requires a huge amount of patience. And I promise as you go along that patience will be tested uh more than once but if you stick with the program you will get there as a rough guide i have found that usually it takes between a few weeks to a few months it really varies uh but it's certainly not something you can learn in an hour and it's a step-by-step -step process so what is vibrato how do we get to what you see in the end, which is that which helps us to create that beautiful lush sound. In order to get to that, we first of all have to really put it, put the process under the magnifying glass. Yeah, and when we do that, what we actually see is what vibrato is, is a sort of pumping motion of the arm. Yeah, a sort of pumping motion of our lower arm here, that is. And you can see already when I, when I do that, my, my upper body stays completely still here and it's just my lower arm is doing that. If you imagine you had, I don't know, a, a water pump or a bicycle pump or something like that and you just go like that. So that's the first thing to learn. Yeah, so you try that kind of with a flat hand, make sure your upper body stays really still. You can really do that even without a cello, no bow in hand, nothing. Just like that. Yeah, so you see, like that. So do that in front of a mirror, ideally, so you can check that you're not doing anything funny here, yeah? So upper body stays nice and still, upper arm stays pretty still and you just learn how to do that. And if your arm is really relaxed, after a while you realize it's sort of taking on a life of its own a little bit. Like that. Yeah? So, that's a preliminary exercise I give my students. And we would, first of all, probably be spending a week just doing that. So that is what I would really set as homework in week one just doing that and once that can be executed correctly then we'll start to gradually gradually transfer the process to the cello yeah so that is the second step and to start with i like to teach that actually um usually on the d string because um it just ensures i think better shape than as if you were learning it on the a string because the a string is always always prone to slightly bad habits so when we're starting to transfer it to the cello we keep this massively magnified movement and we start first of all with really audible shifting between first and fourth position so we do that <laughs> which I'm going to explain. The first one is we need to be very, very mindful of our shape in the left hand. So I want to have this sort of C shape here. Yeah, so no collapsed thumb, none of that. 
nice C shape. So you see that little I spy here? Yeah? So nice shape and it's very, very easy once you start to do that for that to crumble. If it crumbles, immediately reset. Always come back to that shape. That said, it is much less likely to crumble if you don't press with your left hand. Balance your arm. That means it has to be away from your body out here. Don't press, just minimal pressure just to get the string down, but no squeezing of any kind. Yeah, because if you squeeze, then it's going to be really hard to get up and down. So, just like that. Like that. So, to start with, you want to start with hitting that top note, I would say maybe four times to a bow. Eventually working up to first six and then eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, when you first start doing it, you will find that your bow might do all sorts of funny things because the left hand is moving quite quickly. So you need to aim to keep your bow completely calm. Your bow couldn't care less what your left hand is doing here, yeah? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another thing to watch out for, make sure the other fingers are not here by the side, but right above the string, nicely aligned. C shape, remember? And then another really important thing, you must, must, must rotate your fingers. So you do two bows on each finger, Second finger. Third finger. And so on and so forth. One of the most common complaints when I do this with my students, I hear is um my finger is sore, I've got blisters. Uh, yes, you do have blisters and that's because you have been doing it for 10 minutes non-stop on the same finger. You must rotate fingers. A, it'll stop you from getting blisters and secondly, it'll make sure that your vibrato develops evenly on all four fingers. As the reality is, a lot of the time, I think 75% of the practice gets done on the first finger, maybe 20 on the second and three and four sort of share the remaining 5%. Yeah, don't do that. Absolutely equal amounts on each finger. Yeah, so that practice, that will be week one. So first to fourth position, just like that, until you're moving really freely, the thumb behind you should really only be brushing against, yeah? You should not be sort of generating any friction heat here. Okay, so once that is well established, hopefully after a week, but maybe it'll take longer, we make the distance a bit shorter. And we, instead of going to fourth position, say we are only going to go to third position. And again, we are going to do good hand shape again. So we're going to G or thereabouts. It doesn't have to be exact, but aim for that. Yeah, and then second finger. Make sure your arm stays nice and straight and force. So force, I have got all four fingers down here and obviously again, not squeezing really good alignment. So that shortened distance will probably be around about an hour, a week or two. 
Next, we shorten it to a tone. So we only go... And so on and so forth. Again, third and fourth finger. You don't have time for me to show absolutely all of it, but you must do an equally, yeah? Next, you can imagine what's coming, down to a semitone. And now we are getting dangerously close to the real thing. Now, that is a point when you are most in danger of getting really, really impatient and you are so nearly there and you will start to kind of do something like that and force it. Do not try to force it or you'll set yourself back, which you don't want. Yeah. So instead... Keep doing your semitone and when you least expect it, you will suddenly find... You, you, will, you can start to experiment with getting almost smaller than a semitone, like only quarter tone. And suddenly you will realize that your finger has stopped moving up and down, but your arm keeps moving. And there is your vibrato all of a sudden. So that it's a process, as I said, it takes time. And especially when you're getting to the final stages, there is a, there always in everybody's journey, there sort of comes a point where you will think it'll never happen. I will never, never reach that moment where suddenly it just vibrates. Hang in there. I promise you it will happen. Just absolutely stick with the program. And what I would also say is that as you progress through the weeks, always go back through doing the whole program. So recap the other weeks, right from that to to yeah. So go right through that. That is, it is, by the way, also a wonderful way to build some callus on your fingers if you haven't got any yet. And uh, the other thing I would say, obviously, when you first start doing that, in order to avoid, especially if you haven't got callus, to avoid um, blistering, little and often. So don't spend, you know, 20 minutes doing that really initially like five minutes really well focused really well controlled little and often and you will start to see the results yeah so as always if you have any questions about the process please uh post them below uh the video and i'll get uh right back to you and as usual, of course, I hope uh, this has been helpful and um, if, it, uh, if it was, then do smash that like button, uh, subscribe to my channel and um, I promise that there'll be loads more videos coming in the next few days and weeks. See you soon.